एक्ट फोर ऑफ शुद्र का मिच्छ कटिका सो दिस सीन एंटर्स इज सेट इन द हाउस ऑफ वसंत सिन्हा एंड वी फाइंड दैट आर मेड एंटर्स एंड द मेड से I am sent with a message to my mistress by her mother. She is gazing at a picture and is talking with Madhunika. I will go to her. So she walks about and then enter Vasanta Sena. Vasanta Sena is dressed uh, like a courtesan, and also Madhunika, the maid servant of Vasanta Sena. And then Vasanta Sena says, Vasanta Sena. Madhunika, is this portrait a good likeness of Charu Datta? A very real one, indeed. How do you know? Madhunika says, because the looks of my mistress are ca cast so lo lovingly over it. Do you say this, Madhunika, in the way of courtesan courtesy? madam because one reads the profession of a courtesan is that any reason why she must be falsely court courtesans girl courtesans met so many kinds of men that they became falsely courtiers to all but madam when your eyes and your heart too find such delight in this portrait what need is there to ask the reason but i protect myself girl from the ridicule of my friends or i should not like to have my friends ha laugh at me na not so madam a woman is ever secure of the sympathy of her companions first maid approaches and then the first maid says madam your mother sends word that a covered chariot is waiting at the side door and that you are to take a drive Girl, is it the worthy Charu Datta that invites me, Madam? The man who sent ornaments owed ten thousand servant uh, swarnas along with the chariot. Who is he? He is none other than Samastha Samasthaka Samasthanaka, the king's brother-in-law. Begone! Never talk again in this way. Be pacified, madam. Be pacified, madam. Be pacified. I but deliver the message. But I am offended only with the message. What reply shall I convey to your mother? Ah, uh, tell my mother that I, if she desires me to leave, she shall no more send such messages. as you please so the maid servant exists and now we find on the stage sarvalika sarvalika has entered the stage sarvalika someone play sarvalika okay i'm yes. i'm playing natasha yes. sarvalika Sir, i passed my can i okay okay natasha you can okay oh, sir, sir i can't see the okay sir, i can't see the passage Yes, can you see now? Uh, yes, sir. Sharvalika, I cast my uh, sensual guilt upon the night. I dreamt of a sleep and uh, the watchman of the king. But now, at the close of the night, I have become devoid of uh, lustre, lustre like the moon before the rising sun. And again, if uh. ever anyone uh, casts a passing look at me excited as i am or uh, nears me suddenly while i am standing my guilty uh, conscience suspects him and each and every one for man is ever uh, frightened by his own crimes indeed it was uh, for madanika's sake uh, that i did this uh, daring sin i here let to uh, let go the man who was busily engaged in talking to his servant there i avoided uh, the house when i found uh, that it was ruled by women folk at one 
place i stood still like a pillar of the house while the police force uh, passed near me and with a hundred such uh, you know? maneuvers what oh, maneuvers did i turn uh, the night into a day so sarvika sarvalika keeps walking about the space and then vasanta sena says girl just lay this picture on my sofa and soon come back with the fan the maid servant says yes madam and then exit with the picture sarvalika uh, this is vasanta sena's dwelling i shall enter where can i find madanika Okay, then uh, uh, enter Mother Nika. Mother Nika with a fan in her hand. Yes, Sarvalika, seeing Mother Nika, says, "Ah, uh, it ah, uh, it is Mother Nika. Uh, surprising even the God of Love in her for in her accomplishment, she shines as if she is Rati herself in human guise." and brings a coolness of sandal to my heart but uh, burns with the fire of love oh madanika so sarvalika is hey, impressed sarvalika welcome uh, welcome to you sarvalika where have you been till now i will tell you so they gaze at each other passionately so this is a love based on attraction love at first sight and Sarvalika and Madanika gaze at each other passionately. Vasanth Sena says, "Madanika lingers long. Where can she be? What?" She the window. She is spying on the activities of Sarvalika and Madanika. Vasanth Sena. Yes. What? There she stands conversing with a man. Her loving glances are intently fixed on him, and she gazes as if she would drink him in. I imagine, therefore, that. She that he must be the man who desires to came who to make her free well let her enjoy let not anybody's happiness be interrupted i shall not call her so madanika says sarvalika tell me sarvalika what is about, it sarvalika looks about him anxiously and then madanika again says what is it sarvalika you seem very uneasy I will tell you a secret. Are we alone? Of course, we are. What? A deep secret? Ha! Huh, I shall not then listen. Mother Nika, will Vasanth Sena send you free after taking a prize? What? The conversation is something concerning me. Then I will hide myself behind this window and overhear it unobserved. So Vasanth Sena hides I... herself, and she is spying secretly, spying on the activities of Madanika and Sarvalika, what they are doing. And then Madanika says, "I spoke to my mistress about it, Sarvalika, and she said that if she could have her own way, she would free all her servants for nothing. But Sarvalika, where can you find such a fortune, fortune that you may therewith purchase my freedom from my mistress?" affected by the poverty and prompted by love for you o oh, timid timid lady i committed last night a daring act on your account his face is tranquil but it is capable of being fearful if he commit a sinful deed o oh, sarvalika for the sake of a tittling thing as a woman you have risked both the things What are they? What are they? Your life and your character. Foolish lady, fortune never attains an adventurous deed. Sarvalika, your character is without a stain. You haven't done anything very bad when, for my sake, you did the adventurous act. I do not plunder any lady who, with her ornaments, appears like a blossomed creeper. I do not rob the Brahman of his riches, nor steal the gold collected for sacrifice, sacrificial purpose. For the sake of wealth, I have never born uh, of a babe, uh, while in the lap of uh, its nurse. and uh, my wisdom even when used in robbery is if is ever 
this crimiting uh, between the right and the wrong. And so you tell Vasan Sena, let this ornament which is as it were made to suit your body be worn by you out of affection for me without being observed by others. Madhanika says, to Sarvalika. Madhanika responds to Sarvalika and says, but Sarvalika, an ornament that nobody may see and a courtesan, these two things are inconsistent with each other. Therefore, show it to me. Let me see it. So she's also interested in the jewelry. And uh, this jewelry has been stolen by Sarvalika. Then Sarvalika gives the jewelry to her with much uneasiness. And Sarvalika says, Here it is. Madanika observing the jewelry and then Madanika says, so Madanika says that indeed I have seen these ornaments before. Tell me, tell me, where did you get this? What does it concern you, Madanika? Take it. If you have no confidence in me, then why, why do you buy me freedom? Well, this morning I learned in the uh, merchant's quarter that merchant Charudatta, the merchant Charudatta. So both Vasanta Sena and Madanika soon they move, and Sarvalika says, "Revive Madanika." Why it is the now? It is that now your limbs are loosely hanging down in despair, and you, your eyes are rolling in excitement. Why do you uh, uh, tremble and don't pity me when I am come to make you free? Oh, you reckless man! When you did for my sake what you ought not to have done, you didn't kill or hurt anybody in the mansion. Madalika, Sharvalika never strikes one who is terrified nor any who is asleep. Hence, I did not kill anybody, not hurt anybody. Truly. Most truly. Gosantasena regaining consciousness. Ah, uh, I am brought to life again. I breathe again. This is indeed a blessing. What does this priyam mean, Madanika? Even uh, though born of a family that uh, for fortuners of which were highly writers on their uh, conduct, I, I committed sinful deeds because my heart is bound in love with you. If my uh, virtues are killed out of my of me by Cupid, nevertheless, I do I preserve my sin of uh, honor, and you call me your friend, and yet go after care for another. Here in the in this world, this goodly tree is in the form of noble nobly born youths whose fruit consists of wealth and uh, re rendered uh, totally bare of their fruits, having fallen a prey uh, to the harlot birds, but like harlots. Love is indeed a fire, whose flame is armorous sport, which is fed uh, by the fuel of lust, and wherein the youth and wealth of men are being sacrificed. So here we find uh, the language that has been used is so ornamental. And the dominant rasa here is definitely the Sringar rasa. Love is compared to a fire. And the fire whose flame is like amorous sport, lovely sport. So Lovelorn Sarvalika talks about his love as an amorous sport. And this amorous sport is fueled by the fuel of lust. And youth and wealth of men, these are being sacrificed. Sacrifice? So that the flame of love keeps on burning. So Vasantasena is hearing all this and with a smile Vasantasena says. Ah, his excitement is indeed out of place. Sarvalika continues with his own statement on love. Yes, Sarvalika. Yes. Yes, those men are fools, it seems to me, who trust to women or to riches. For riches, 
ladies and women only dishonor those who love them one should love a woman only when she loves for her own accord and must dis discard her when she is devoid for love truly it is said courtesans love or weep uh, for the sake of wealth they gain the conf uh, confidence uh, of others but never confide in them therefore a man of birth and a character should ever add add on them like flowers in a graveyard and again the this position is ever ch ch changing as the waves of the sea like uh, twilight clouds their rag is of short duration women rob men for their wealth and abandon them when they are uh, penniless like squished piece of red lac yes women are indeed fickle the uh, they fix their heart on one but invite another by glances they pour their effusion uh, of joy on one but sport boy bodily with another someone has indeed well said on mountain tops no lotus are grown no will ashes ever bear the horses yoke scattered grain of barely do not grow into rich Uh, nor are the courtesans ladies ever pure and faithful ah accords chaudatta you shall no longer live so these words that are spoken by chavalika represents uh, a kind of uh, presentation of women in society especially women who are related to the profession of entertaining the men folk the courtesans in society and here the character of women is questioned by sarvalika so he says that the courtesans laugh or weep for the sake of wealth and they are not fixed on a person so the love and redness the dominant rasa rags of uh, these ladies who invite uh, people by their glances while they fix their heart on one so there is some kind of uh, longing in them and they want to use the situation that they are in ladies are therefore not very pure and faithful according to sarvalika sarvalika's comments against the female of contemporary age also represents a patriarchal view of the female so here we have a representation of the social reality women are always looked at as people who do not uh, do not uh, participate in the discourse of society in the family and they always are the cause of much harm according to sarvalika sarvalika's attitude is uh, guided by his patriarchal prejudice against the female so he almost uh, resembles our hamlet shakespeare wrote a play called hamlet where he returns to his state denmark and finds his mother married to gertrud mother gertrud married to his uncle and he says that frailty thy name is woman similarly sarvalika is also talking about this frailty in women as the cause women rob men of their wealth and abandon them when they are penniless they like squeezed piece of red black this is what he says about the female so madanika seizing him by the hem of his garment yes madanika says you are talking mere nonsense and your anger is ridiculously out of place excellent madanika madanika therefore protests so whatever sarvalika says madanika does not accept so in spite of her humble status as a slave woman as a maid servant to a courtesan she has this power and authority to protest against this male attitude towards the female sarvalika how will he defend sarvalika says out of place how so this ornament belongs verily to my mistress and when then and what then 
and she deposited it in the hand of that gentleman. What for? Whispering. That is why. With embarrassment. Alas. Unconsci unconsciously, I ha have I deprived of its uh, foliage, uh, that very branch, to which being heated uh, with the sun, I roasted for shade. So he was, uh, he resorted for shade. He took the shade of the branch of the tree and he deprived that branch of the tree, the foliage, the leaves that is heated in the sun. So Vasantesana, who is listening to all these conversations, says, Vasantesana. What? He too feels very sorry. Surely he did this thing in ignorance. Madanika, what is to be done now? You are yourself the best judge in the matter. Nay, not so. See, women as a whole are wise by nature, while wisdom is acquired by men only by the study of Shastras. See how Sarvalika has changed his position now. Just a few moments ago, he was describing female in bad words. And now he is saying that women as a whole are wise by nature. Practical, common sense, their natural education has taught women to be wise. While wisdom, in case of men, are acquired through studious enterprise by reading the sastras. That means the knowledge acquired by men is artificial, while the knowledge or wisdom acquired by female is natural and practical. So this is again uh, just the reversal of what he was saying just now. Yeah, Madanika says. Savalika, if you will take my advice, then restore the ornament to that righteous gentleman. Madanika, if he if he should inform of me, inform of me to the king's officers, or if he should uh, prosecute me, prosecute. or if he should pros okay. prosecute me. So Sarvalika is afraid of this prosecution by the king. And if Charudatta tells the king about this theft, he will be prosecuted. So Madanika says. But he shall not come from the moon. Well said, Madanika, well said. I feel no grief nor fear for this uh, venturesome act that I have done. What for uh, do you mention to me the virtues of the noble gentleman? Does this mean, uh, does, does this mean act uh, generate in, my, in me any feeling of shame? Or what can the king here to do uh, such a Raf says I. Nevertheless, you, your suggestion is inconsistent with uh, pred prudence. prudence. Uh, let uh, some other plan to be thought out. This is another plan. What can this other plan possibly be? Under the guise of being an attendant of the gentleman, place the ornament in the hands of my mistress. And what then? Then you are no thief. The worthy Charudatta becomes discharged of his obligation, and my mistress has got her ornaments. But isn't this course very risky? I tell you, give it to her. Any other course is only still more risky. Good, madam, good. You have spoken like a free woman. Having followed you, I have uh, reigned perform profound wisdom. When there is no moon in the night, it is hard to find a guide. Then you shall wait here. Then you shall wait here a moment in the temple of the Kamadeva while I, while I inform you, my mistress, of your arrival. Let it be so. So, Madanika is, is approaching Vasanta Sena. You remember that uh, Charudatta is supposed to return the jewel to Vasanta Sena. Vasanta Sena was waiting. And Vasanta Sena is now spying on the conversation, spying on the activities of Sarvalika and Madanika. 
and Madanika has now concocted a story as if that Charudatta has sent the jewelry to be returned back to Vasantasena. So Madanika now approaches Vasantasena and says, Mistress, here is come a Brahmin from Charudatta. Girl, how do you know that he is associated with Charudatta? Sir. Yes, Madanika says. We are not, I am not able to see the screen. Yes, Madanika, can you see? No, sir, I am still not able to see the screen. Yes, sir, now I am able to see the screen. Madam, else I, did, uh, else I don't know even anything that is associated with myself. Vasantasana is shaking her head and smiling, giving an aside, because she knows the entire story. She knows what they have planned. So Vasantasana says. Quite proper to say so. Now aloud. Let him enter. As my mistress commands, approaching Sarvalika, enter Sarvalika. So she approaches Hi. Sarvalika and asks Sarvalika to enter. Sarvalika is approaching with some embarrassment. Remember what Sarvalika Hi. has planned to tell? Sarvalika has planned to tell that he has been sent by Chaludatta to return the jewel. So Sarvalika is approaching with some embarrassment. Yes, Sarvalika. My greetings to you, madam. Well, I salute you, sir. Pray, be seated. A merchant communicates to you on account of a dilapid Sorry. Dilapidated condition Dilapidated. of my house. Yeah. Condition okay. of my house. It is hard to keep uh, this cascade uh, safe. So please receive it back. So he gives the casket back it to Madanika and then he starts to leave because he is feeling very embarrassed. Yeah, wasn't this enough? Sir, please take to the gentleman my return message. Savalika is now saying to himself. Who will go there? What and is the aloud. message? He's saying now aloud. So oh, who is there is an aside. Aloud. Yeah. And then aloud he's and speaking. And then uh, what? What is the message? Sir, please take Madanika in return. Madam, I don't quite understand you. But I do understand it. How so? I have been told by the noble Charudatta that I am to give Madanika to the gentleman who hands over this ornament to me. Sir, you are therefore to understand that it is he, Charudatta, that hands her over to you. Sarvalika is now speaking to himself. Suddenly he has found a treasure house. So he has stolen the money to get Madanika freed from from Vasantasena. He wants to purchase back Vasantasena. During that time, the slaves were to be freed from the master or mistress on account of payment of the slave money. So, Madanika has uh, been freed by Vasantasena, and Vasantasena says that you can take. So, Sarvalika, on hearing this, Sarvalika. Ah, ah she has found me out aloud. Then he speaks, then he speaks aloud, yes. Uh, good, noble Charudatta, good. Indeed, man must ever strive after virtues. For a man who is uh, devoid of virtue, however rich he may be, can never equal one who, through poor, is possessed of mm -hmm. great virtue. And again, man must uh, ever endeavor to acquire virtues, for there is nothing that is un, un sorry sir attainable, unattainable uh, uh, by virtue. Unattainable by virtue. It is on account of the excellence of the virtue that the moon secured a seat on Shiva's head, which is otherwise un unattainable. So wasn't this now listening to this says is my charioteer here yeah 
she talked about uh, a servant came and talked about a chariot that has been sent by samstanaka so vasudevana says is my chariot here here then enter a servant with a chariot yes servant mistress the chariot is ready girl madanika please look at me well you are free enter the chariot please remember me madanika weeping i have been i have been abandoned by my mistress yes she falls at her feet vasanta sena now it is you that is to be revered by me go then enter the chariot do not forget me sarvalika says heaven bless you madam madhunika so sarvalika is uh, quite impressed by the offering given by vasanta sena sarvalika has got madhunika freed and then sarvalika says survey this with grateful look this personage and salute her with bended head for because of her you attain the otherwise unattainable veil that is characteristic of a name of a bride so he ascends the chariot with madanika and begins to depart so we can hear a voice behind the scene so through this scene we find that madanika and sarvalika their love is very strong Sarvalika has stolen the jewel from Charudatta's house in order to support his main act of freeing Madanika from Vasanthasena by paying the jewel, paying the money. On the other hand, we find that Vasanthasena is also a charitable woman. She spies on the activities of Sarvalika and Madanika, and then she offers Madanika to Sarvalika and asks Sarvalika to take away Madanika. Madanika is freed. as sarvalika and madanika depart they ascend the chariot they begin to depart a voice behind the scenes so from the background some voices are heard who's there who's there the governor's orders king palaka being alarmed out out of belief in the saying of the soothsayers that a young herdsman arakya shall be the future king has brought him from his hamlet and has confined him in jail therefore every one of you must be watchful at your respective stations so this announcement is made off stage and what we hear is another complication in the plot that king palaka had arrested arakya arakya who is planning to be the future king has escaped from the jail and therefore the announcer gives this uh, order of the governor that be aware be watchful sarvalika listening to the announcement sarvalika listening to that announcement says um uh, what king palaka has imprisoned my good friend aryaka and here i have become a married man alas or or rather two things alone are most dear to all men in this world a friend and uh, a wife but under these circumstances it is a friend that is superior to hundreds of beautiful wives very well i shall i shall get down so he gets down from the chariot sarvalika has got the call that arakya is in trouble and he must be supported so in order to support his friend arakya sarvalika descends from the chariot and madanika again is deprived of the beloved and she is shedding tears folding her hands requesting sarvalika madanika yes this own do my lord you must at least lead me to the elders of your family yes my beloved you tell me just the thing that i have in my mind to the servant my good fellow do you know the house of the merchant Rebhi, Rebhi, na, servant. Oh, sorry. Servant. Yes, yes, I know the house of Rebhi, na. Lead my wife, uh, Gaidar. Sitar, there. Okay, Madanika. 
So shall it be as my lord directs. But my lord, you must be very careful. So Sarvalika is asked to be careful, and Mother Nika leaves. So Rebila's name was heard by us previously. He was a very good singer. Charudatta admired this person. Now Sarvalika says. Like Yagan Yagan Dharyana for the release of the king Udhyana, shall I rouse for the release of my friend, the kinsman, uh, the roughs, uh, those that have won distinction for the strength of their arms, uh, and those royal servants that are uh, disaffected on account of insolence of the king. And again, my dear friend has been unreasonably confirmed by weak force with because of imaginary apprehensions of their own. And I shall go myself and release him quickly, who is as it were the moon that has fallen into the jaws of Rahu. So he goes out. So the maid servant enters the room and says, Madam. Fortunate you are, a Brahmin has come from the river Charudatta. Ah, this is a very happy day. Girl, conduct him hither respectfully, attended by one of the bastard pages. Yes, mistress. So the maidservant exits, and now we find on the stage the person who has been sent by Charudatta, Charudatta's friend Vidushaka, Maitri. With a page boy comes, and then Vidushaka says, "Someone planning to play the role of Vidushaka? Yes, Shubhapriyo, Pujali, Pujali. Sir, may I? Okay, Jafar, very good. So, Jafar, you can see the screen. So, Jafar is our yes, sir. Maitri, yes. Hey, Ravana, the king of the Rakshasas, move in the Pushpaka car that has been won by him through the rigorous finances." But now I, a Brahmin, move about with a retinue of men and women, though I never took the trouble of performing any penance. Sir, please have a look at the gateway of our residence, please. So he gazes Ooh, with admiration. Cham yeah, Vidushaka uh, Maitri gazes with admiration and then says. Oh, the charming appearance of the outer entrance of the palace of Vasantsena. It has just been sprinkled with water and cleaned, and then besmeared with green cow dung. It's... It's... Flow. Uh, its it's flow, flow is decorated with offerings of all sorts of fragrant flowers. It stretches up its head very high, as if desirous of peeping into the sky. It is adorned with strings of jasmine garlands that loosely hang down and toss about, thereby leading one to mistake them for the trunk of Aravata. Aravata. Aravata is the, it shines. the large elephant Aravata. So this is a beautiful description of the palace of Vasantasena, the temple of Vasantasena that is being described here. Yes. Vidushaka continues, it shines. It shines, uh, it shines with its high ivory portal and is lovely with the array of rich and gay banners, beautifully dyed with saffron and whose finger-like ends gracefully flutter in the breeze by the force of the wind and seem to say, come hither, come hither. In both sides are attractive with auspicious crystal pots adorned with bright green mango twigs that spring up gracefully and are set at the foot of the pillars that support the portal. Its doors are of gold and are thickly set with diamonds, which are as hard to pierce as the breast of a great demon, and it causes weariness to the desires of the poor, really. Its splendor catches forcibly the sight of even the most indeficient man. Come, sir. Please enter this first court. So, first court. 
Vidushaka enters the first court and looking about, Vidushaka starts describing the first court of Vasantasena's palace. Hey, here in this first court are rows of balconies, wide as the moon, conch and lotus stalks, whitened by handfuls of white powder strewn over them and glittering with golden stairs, stairways inlaid with all sorts of gems and they seem to gaze down on Ujjaini with moon-like faces consisting of their crystal windows from which strings of pearls are, are dangling. The doorkeeper is seated comfortably and dozes like a learned Brahmin. The crows which are tempted by the rice mixed with curdled milk do not eat the offering, being of the same color as the mortar. Direct me, madam. Come, sir, and enter this second court. So, Vidushaka entering the second court starts describing the second court. Vidushaka. Hey, here in this second court are tied the bullocks of the chariot that are very fat with mouthfuls of grass and grain husks that are brought for them from the neighborhood and whose horns are anointed with oil. And here is another, a buffalo, snorting like a gentleman that is insulted. And here again is a ram whose neck is being rubbed like that of a wrestler after the fight is over. And here are horses whose hair is trimmed and dressed. And here is a monkey that is tied fast as a thief in the stable. And here an elephant is fed by its keepers with cakes of boiled rice dripping with oil. Show me the way, madam. Come, sir. Please enter this third court. So Vidushaka is instructed by the maid to enter the third court. And entering and looking about, Vidushaka says. Oh, wonderful. Here in the third court are these seats prepared for young men of birth to sit on. A half-read book is lying on the gaming table. And here is the table itself with chessmen made of gems. And here are courtesans and old vitas moving about who are clever in the matter of bringing about out union or discord in love affairs and who hold in their hands various pictures painted in many colors. Show me the way, madam. Come, sir, and please enter the, this fourth court. So the maidservant uh, asks Vidushaka to enter the fourth court. Vidushaka enters and looking about, looking about the fourth court, Vidushaka says about the fourth court. Hey, and here in this fourth court, the Mridangas being beaten by the fingers of maidens are booming like the clouds. The, the symbols. symbols are falling as the symbols are falling as the stars from heaven when this store of religious merit is exhausted. The flute is resounding music sweetly like the humming of the bees. And here again is a lute that someone places on the lap like a girl excited by jealousy and is gently stroked on by the fingers. And here are courtesan girls that sing as sweet as the bees that are intoxicated with the drink of honey, are taught dancing, are made to recite a drama with the sentiment of Stringara in it, and water pitchers Hanging air windows are enjoying the bees, the breeze. Show me the way, madam. Come, sir, and enter this fifth court. So the maid servant uh, then instructs Vidushaka to enter the fifth court. So one by one, first four courts are already described, and then Vidushaka is asked to enter the fifth court. So Vidushaka enters and looks about and says, Here in this fifth court, the overpowering smell of asafetida and oil rises enough to excite the hunger of a poor man. The kitchen is kept hot all the day, and the puffs of steam 
laden with all sorts of good smells. Looks like size issuing from its mouth like doors. The smell of the preparation of all kinds of food creates much appetite in me. And here the butcher's boy is washing the flesh of an animal as if it were an old piece of cloth. The cook is preparing all kinds of food. Sweet meats are being made. Cakes are being baked. How I wish water is given for washing my feet and am invited for this excellent dinner. Really, this dwelling with the courtesans and bastard pages adorned with various jewels appear to be heaven itself with its Gandharvas and Apsaras. Tell me, who are you, bastards? Ah, oh, we are bastard pages, spitted and fondled in strangers' dwelling, fed on strangers' food, and begotten by other men upon stranger women. We are intent on watching others' wealth, and as for our merits, very little needs to be said, and we sport in mirth like young elephants. Show me the way, madam. Come, sir. Enter this sixth court. So the maidservant asks Vidushaka to enter the sixth court. Vidushaka now enters the sixth court and looking about, Vidushaka says. Here in the sixth court, these architectural arches that are made of gold and gems and are set with sapphires present the spectacle of the home of the rainbow. The dwellers are mutually testing the lapis lazuli, lazuli. the pearls, the corals, the topazes, the sapphires, the concather yeah. gems, the rubies, em emeralds, and all the other kinds of gems. Rubies are being set in gold. Golden ornaments are being made. Pearls are being strung on a red cord. Pieces of lapis lazuli are being finely polished. Shells are being cut. Corals are being wetted on touch stones. Wet and spread out saffron is being dried up. Musk is being shaken. Sandal paste is being carefully prepared. Perfumes are being compounded. Betel leaves and camphor are being given to courtesans and their lovers. Coquettish glances are being exchanged. Laughter is prevailing everywhere. Wine is being drunk in incessantly with in sounds of glee. Innocently with sounds of glee. Here are here are men servants, here are maid servants, and here are men who have neglected the children, wife and wealth, and who beguile the time in drinking, having been left to themselves by the courtesans, maidens, after having drunk from the liquor jars. Show me the way, madam. Come, sir. And enter the seventh court. So Vidushaka is asked to enter the seventh court. These are one by one, six courts are already visited by Vidushaka, and now the seventh court. Vidushaka enters the seventh court and looking about, he says, Vidushaka, A. Here is the seventh court. Pair of doves seated comfortably in snug dovetail courts are engaged in kissing each other and are very happy. And here is a parrot in a cage repeating verses like a Brahman with his belly full of curdled milk and rice. And here again is a talking thrush chattering like a housemaid who tries to show herself as best as she could because somebody had noticed her. A cuckoo whose throat is delighted with having tested the essence of various fruit is queeing like a procrus. 
rows of cages are suspended from pegs quails are being made to fight with one another patridges are being made to talk caged pigeons are being incited the same peacock is dancing happily happily about as if atoned with uh, various jewels and is as it were by shaking its wings fanning the roof heated by the rays of the sun here are the pairs of flamingos which appear as if they were the rays of the moon collected together and that wander about after lovely maidens as if they are teaching a graceful gait and here again are tame cranes moving here and there like old eunuchs hey this courtesan has made a name for the collection of various birds really the dwelling of this courtesan seems to be like the nandana garden of indra show me the way madam show me come sir and enter the eighth court so vidushaka is asked to enter the eighth court and vidushaka entering and looking about and says madam who is this wrapped in a sleek silk cloak and adorned with numerous wonderful and duplicate ornaments who wanders about shuffling with awkward movements of the body the maid servant answers sir this is the brother of my mistress what what amount of penances had he to perform to be the brother of vasanta sena but no he may be glittering loving and even perfumed but yet he is unfit to be restored to by the world as the champaka tree grows in a graveyard but madam who is that lady that is covered with a mantle with flowers knitted with the texture sitting on the high, this high seat with shoes on her greasy feet sir this is the mother of my mistress what an expensive belly the dirty old witch has got i believe she was first brought in like a big idol and then only the entrance was built in this house oh man don't ridicule our mother in this way she is suffering from a quartan agu <laughs> oh thou blessed quartan agu ha look look thou upon me a brahman with this thy favor wretched fellow may death strike you <laughs> why why slave wench a person whose belly is swollen and fleshy like this is better dead if this mother of vasanta sena who is swollen with wine and other intoxicant dies then a thousand jackals would have an ample dinner madam do any ships of your sail none sir none or why is it asked at all your breasts hips and loins are themselves a agreeable vessels floating in the ocean of cupid of clear waters of love i have just seen vasanta sena's palace with its various contents and eight courts and really it seems to me as if i had seen this i haven't got the eloquence to praise it is this the house of a courtesan or a piece of kubera's palace where is the mistress sir she remains in the orchard sir please enter so vidushaka enters and again looking looking about he has entered the orchard hey how charming how charming the orchard looks here are many trees that are covered with excellent flowers that are uniformly blossomed silken swings are hung under the dense tree just big enough for a girl to sit the golden jasmine the shefalika the white jasmine and the jasmine the nava malika the crimson amaranth the spring creeper and so many other flowers have fallen of themselves and really the orchard by its charming appearance throws into the shade the nandan garden itself and the pond here looks like the morning twilight for the lilies and red lotuses are as splendid as the rising sun this asoka tree and its newly sprung flowers and sprouts shines like a brave warrior in the thick of fight besmeared with clotted crimson gold mixed with mud well where is your mistress sir bring your looks down oh you will you will see my mistress heaven bless you 
Vasanthi Sena speaking in Sanskrit enters. And says, ah, Vasanthi Maitreya. Sena. Ah, Maitreya, you are highly welcome. Here is a seat. Pray, be seated here. Yeah, Vidushaka says, Madam, please be seated. So they both seat themselves. Vasanthi Sena. Is the young merchant doing well? Madam, he is well. Good, Maitreya, good. Do the birds in the form of friends yet resort happily to him, who is a fair tree, rich with fruits of excellences, whose leaves are virtues, whose boughs are modesty, whose root is confidence, and whose flowers magnanimity? How rightly the naughty woman has observed. Yes, indeed, yes, yes. Sir, what is the purpose of your coming? What brings you here? Listen, madam, the respectful Charudatta raises his folded hands respectfully to the head and requests you, madam. What does he command? Hmm. I have freely gambled away the golden casket, taking it to be mine. And it is not known where the gaming master has gone, for he is engaged in the king's emissary. Maid servant enters and says, Madam, fortunate you are, the gentleman has turned out a gambler. Vasanthasana says in aside. Even though it was stolen by a thief, he says out of pride that he gambled it away. I loved him all the way more for that. Uh, then kindly accept this jewel necklace in its place, madam. Shall I show him the ornament? Reflecting, Vasanthasana says. Oh, rather not so soon. Why, why don't you take this necklace, madam? <laughs> Loving and looking at her friend. Why should I not take the necklace, Maitreya? She takes it and keeps it by her side, aside. How is it that drops of honey fall from the mango tree even after it blossoms are gone? Aloud. Sir, pray, tell the worthy gambler Charudatta in my name that I shall pay him a visit this evening. What else does she mean to take by paying a visit to him? Madam, I will tell him to have nothing more to do with this courtesan. Vishishaka then goes out. Vasanthasena, yes. Girl, take this ornament and we shall go to bring cheer to Charudatta. Madam, look up. An untimely storm is gathering. The clouds may gather the dark night lower. The rain may fall heavily and forever. I care not a straw for all of them when my heart is directed towards my lover. Take the necklace, girl, and come quickly. Okay, she goes out, and therefore the act ends with the departure of Asantasena. So the dark clouds are hovering over the land of Ujjaini. Something ominous is going to happen. Now, up to this moment, we have all things turning happily, but soon the untimely storm that is awaited is gathering and will fall. At this moment, the play ends in the fourth act and then we will have the fifth act. Thank you everyone for such a wonderful reading of the play. So we enjoyed this participation of the students, participants reading the play together. So we will have act five next Monday. In the meantime, you also read this play. So that next day again we can read and understand play. Any question from your side if you have, please ask. Or shall we conclude? Okay, we conclude. We wait for questions in the next class. And then we will have the reading of Act 5. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Stay well. Tata. Thank you, sir. Okay, Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye.
अच्छे से